Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Top 10 Tennis. My name is Dr. Ashley Morgan Burge and I'm your host. I am the author of 11 books. I have been a CEO for the past 12 years. I am the founder of a startup set on data privacy, looking to take on the likes of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all wrapped under one roof. I am an elite performance coach of going on 18, 19 years, having worked with athletes throughout Europe, North America, through Australia. And most excitingly, slash specifically, I am actually the world's leading scientist on coach and athlete performance, specifically when we're looking at tennis. And I use tennis as the blueprint um, that essentially correlated with and uncovered how to develop a top 10 ranking. I'll say that again because it gets me excited and it's something we never thought was possible, but now we know it is. We've got the data behind it top 10 ranking which is incredibly awesome incredibly cool especially if you're listening and you're in this space it is possible my work includes um, everything from mitigating injuries through developmental players all the way through to the elite pathways to develop a top 10 player um, and everything encompassed between. I'm behind theories such as the optimal performance theory, the V by Dr. B, the rule of transference, it goes on. I've coined terms from the likes of barrier breaker to the golden rule and a slew of others and you know beyond top 10 tennis is really looking at unpacking the work behind those 11 books and diving in deeper and giving you those answers you've been searching for on developing potentially that top 10 ranking now each episode we're going to open a specific section of these books and really get down to the nitty gritties and just give some additional insights there and get excited because I know I say this very frequently but if this is a really passionate I guess topic I'm all about and I hope after listening you you're on the same page as me and you're getting excited with me too. Today's episode is number eight. And for those of you who have have been following along, thank you so much. And your feedback is incredibly appreciated. So if you've got more, keep it coming. Uh, Today's episode, if you want to follow along, we're on page 63 of The Secrets to Optimal Performance Success, a comprehensive discussion on developing elite coaches and players. And today we're going to dive into the section titled Continued Learning. How do coaches continue to learn after they have become a coach? And you know, I feel as though the heading says it all because learning, it's fundamental uh, regardless of what you do, where your passion lies, whatever your professional endeavors are, continually continuing that upkeep not only empowers the individual, but it also keeps abreast of new trends, new data, new research out there, and just, I guess, new uncoverings that are being revealed. I won't necessarily say each and every day in a field, but we, I mean, that's a universal. Though each and every week to every few weeks, there's normally something incredibly exciting being shared. Now, when we say that, I'm not specifically saying here, go and read this uh, research paper. Because I can put my hand up and say, no, thank you. And again, if you've been following along, that's what 
all of these uh, books are about is that yes I did the hard work and the fundamental get the science and all of that wrapped up but yeah tick though I think coming from that high performance and uh, perspective and that player background and working with so many athletes over the years and parents I really um, believe that it needs to be stripped back and shared in a way that everyday humans digest and again this is what it's all about is humanizing the approach is that we are all individuals and sure some of us here are also scientists but that doesn't mean we have to continuously share and speak in that scientific and sometimes jargon that we know only accommodates to a, a certain audience and I think because of that a lot of uh, key messages get lost along the way so if you're new to my work hopefully you do find that somewhat comforting is that sure it is wrapped in that um, science and it's a hundred percent backed by science that is something I always promise though on the other hand is that I think it's in- incredibly important to still wrap in and interchange the language that we use on a day-to-day basis um, in direct contrast to our specific scientific papers that cater towards a different audience. (laughs) All right, I'm going to share snippets from this section, um, just brief ones, and then we're going to um, dive in just a little bit deeper to share a bit more. The older we get, the more susceptible we become to putting a stop to our ultimate stages of learning and development. Before you disagree, this is a natural process resulting from up until our late teenage years where we are expected to learn through the traditional system, school. (laughs) It then becomes our own personal responsibility and choice as to whether or not we want to continue to learn or settle with what we know and run with it. Now, that is an incredibly important um, topic to touch on because a lot of us out there, we went through school and we could have stopped there or we could have gone on to university. Though when we're specifically looking at the sporting world, it's a mix which means we have some that have gone through school and then they've followed the the traditional tertiary structure and they've done their oftentimes undergraduate degrees and they've come out the other end some their master's degree other end and there's a couple of us like me that can put our hand up and that we went the whole year and we've done in excess of 10 years there it it was a lot and we've come out with our doctorates and we specialize in those specific areas and there's a very big misconception especially in Australia about I think what that means and I mean I I like sharing this because I did that those hard yards and specifically those of us with our PhD so our doctorates We're actually responsible, oftentimes, uh, depending on our fields, is educating, let's say, the other doctors, let's say the medical doctors that do their three to four years before they end up doing their rotations, etc. Whereas those of us who do our doctorates, that's a 10 year plus journey of specialization where we actually crunch the numbers and we crunch the data and we really know what we're talking about. (laughs) So if you're out there, you've got your PhD and you're listening, I'm on your side. Now, if you're not too familiar with that, that's okay. Though I think it's incredibly important to share um, the academic rigor that's involved in reaching a specific level of learning so then we can share. Whereas oftentimes um, there are, let's say, one too many people that share or um, put their hand up as a doctor without doing those 10 years plus of hard work. And look, it's a very common misconception. So if 
it is one held you're not alone um, but hopefully what I'm sharing is um, sharing some key points there around that anyway back to the core point that some of us we will continue learning others not so much because it's just not our cup of tea and that is totally understandable and okay too what we're getting at and touching on is that learning does not need to be through uh, the common system whereas it doesn't necessarily need to be through school or through tertiary studies there are other systems though it's integral to stay up to date with i guess your field now if we're specifically looking at tennis and coaches if you're out there and you're a coach and you're listening then you really should be familiar with my work though there's a very good chance maybe you're not and oftentimes that's because of that knowledge gap and the continual upkeep of new knowledge Um, all this work has come out in the last 10 years which means if you did all your learning 15 20 years ago and you didn't upskill and continue that knowledge base there's an incredibly high chance as in probably 99.9 percent that you're not familiar because it means you don't have your finger on the pulse of those latest trends Uh, we know in sports development the game moves very quickly irrespective of what sport you are in and athletes are continuously progressing and reaching new levels of peak performance and that is incredibly exciting but that's because we've got science on our side that we're leveraging we're able to empower the human body to push those markers further and further in a safe way but also optimizing the endpoint though if you are not continuously uh, refreshing that and when I say continuously I'm not talking about every day but I'm talking about let's say on an annual basis a recap a refresher but also on a a monthly basis being in tune with what's going on now there's nothing worse um, than continuing that upkeep through let's say non-traditional means and I will use social media as an example of a non-traditional and that is because whether you are on a it doesn't matter which social network you are on but everyone oftentimes put their puts their hands up to say they're an expert in a field and people listen and that is often the time where that misinformation is spread but also when you're looking at an athlete as a whole where injuries can occur if coaches are not upkeeping this knowledge the injuries are going to continue and that is an incredibly important aspect of my work is that we're looking at building technical parameters in the athlete not necessarily just the tennis player but how do we optimize an individual's performance allowing them to develop towards their end peak without picking up those injuries now there's at least and and this would be a nice number 80 percent of coaches out there that are not conscious that a lot of their current practices wrapped up under there are injuries and risks associated with whether indirectly or directly a lot of movement patterns to biomechanics and not having a sound grasp not of these principles but of newer techniques and modeling that can remove that that's where it gets fundamental back to the chapter however in order to become a coach this requires some form of learning post school and the type of duration of learning or further education 
is dependent on the coaching course you participate in within your country of origins and their set coaching standards and or the benchmarks to attain the initial or first coaching qualification. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I guess, especially in tennis, it's normally you go one, two, three, and and that's in a lot of sports. Some of them have their specific, uh, I guess, differentiators. One is you're at the developmental stage and it's where you start out. Two is that you're at that advanced level where you can work with those high performance players, but you still have that knowledge gap. And three is that highest. Now, when we're looking at that, we are still looking at a baseline um, certification, which means it's subpar. It is not in sync with tertiary education, but it is within that field. So please do not confuse that with an undergraduate certification that goes for three to four years. This is not the same. It is saying you have a certain knowledge there and here you go. And these certifications more often than not are not run by tertiary educated presenters and or providers. That is fundamental to remember. These are sporting specialized certifications, not in the depth of let's say a movement science degree, let alone a master's or a doctorate. It is nothing of the likes. It is an initial beginner qualification within that field. Now, there is nothing to say anything bad against that because when I was 18, I did my ones, 19, my twos. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, my level threes. And I will tell you what, (laughs) There were not too many coaches that were a fan of having, let alone, I guess, a woman coach, but also half their age with that level three qualification because it's just something, it just pushes their buttons. Now, if you're one of them and you're listening, I will not apologize for that. Um, And I really hope you're on board with women and the younger generation really upskilling and using that knowledge to empower the current generation to excel in their performances. Though it's also incredibly important to acknowledge that the older coaches that may have that level two or level three certification, oftentimes that is not backed up with that tertiary upkeep or it is not upkept with current standards. And I think standards is a very um, simplified term and it is not universal because specific federations around the world have different standards. So it's not universal. They have a relative um, understanding between specific principles but do they include the latest um, scientific research? No. And I'm happy to share that because the governing bodies around the world I have specifically reached out to to help have not used the data. And that is one of the most alarming trends to share. Because if these bodies were conscious of the athlete as a whole and they really wanted to develop the best players and the best coaches in the world and to really leverage the power of data and science, they would be. They would have access to this work. And that on one hand... It does make me sad, but then on the other hand, it doesn't. And I'll tell you why it doesn't. Because so often than not, players, coaches, and parents do not have access to these federations. Oftentimes, they're exclusive to certain, I guess, groups or or persons in the know. And there are a lot of other coaching providers out there not affiliated with federations, but they're still allowed to run their courses. And 
I'm equally happy slash disheartened to share that neither do they have access. And that is um, a core fundamental problem in these frameworks is that they do not have access to the knowledge because they are not continuously upkeeping and renewing their courses. Now, a key marker for this is to be able to have those insightful discussions between parent, player and athlete to really ascertain the knowledge base you are at and the capabilities there. Because if a certification is the baseline and irrespective if it is a level two or a level three, that is incredible. Though, is it backed by anything else? Personally, I know when I did my level twos, I already had my masters. Level threes was at the same time, but I just wanted to know more and I always wanted to be the best in the world. And I can thank my mum for that. And that's another story. And it's pretty cool when you get there, though, let me tell you, there are a lot of people out there that really don't like hearing it, especially if it's in their domain. Though that is also why I champion data, because science doesn't lie. Opinions do. Opinions are uh, non-factual. Though the data is what we can use to really empower performance, but irrespective of who you are and where you're from, and if you're a woman as well, using that data is incredibly powerful. Now, the biggest, I think, theme here is to better understand where that coach's background has come from. They could be an exceptional player that has transitioned into coaching. And so long as that knowledge is continuously being upkept, you're on the right track because you could have a coach that is a level one that has has their undergraduate degree, even their master's. But if they do not know how to tie the two together to more specifically and succinctly meet the player's needs, which also comes back to that coach-athlete relationship, they're no better off. It's about having all of the ingredients that we know of to build that successful, not just coach athlete relationship, but we're talking about how we optimize performances if we're getting serious. And if we really want to head towards a top 10 ranking, because that's what we're all about. Now, if you are not building the key foundations integrated within the scope of that learning structure, which, okay, it sounds a bit complicated, but we're really just talking about what we're reviewing, what we're taking in and how we're applying it, then again, you're no better off. So when we go back to the key focus here around continued learning, that's what it's all about. Is It's that continuous upkeep and the relevance there. Although coaching standards do seemingly differ from country to country, as shared, ultimately most of us are the same in regards to the simplest blueprint, beginner, intermediate or advanced. Now that refers to whether it's one, level ones or level two, level three. And most of those levels are universal. You do sometimes get providers that want to distinguish themselves and they go, okay, level one, two, three, four, five. Now, essentially we can draw that back and go, well, then a level three is associated with a level five. A level two is associated with a three, four. And a level one is then associated with or correlated with a one, two. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not streamlined across sports, let alone singular sports. This blueprint is the most accepted standardized format due to its transparency. Yes, there are organizations who add different levels between this streamlined format, 
However, essentially the type of coach you are wanting to become and or level of players or players you aim to work with and ultimately coach can be aligned with this blueprint. Now that's really sharing or simplifying what was, I guess, just really dived into about there is not a universal structure that exists, which, you know, in the ideal world, that would be great. Maybe different sporting codes have been getting closer, but when we're looking at tennis specifically, I know that that's not the case. I know that the initial publication should be part of the level one. Then the, the, you know, the next two or three, the level two, and then the next, you know, again, two, three towards the, the level three. And when you follow that, those, I guess, publications, you complete the whole coach with the toolkit capable like literally and scientifically capable with the data to develop a top 10 player. Still, ask yourself the same question. What are they reading? And maybe you're going to start reading it too. What are you reading? Are they receptive to that? Can you pull off something you're rather inquisitive about and have an open discussion with that coach? Does your coach pull out new data and share it with you and say, we're going to integrate this into your pathway? Now, obviously it's not as specific or relevant if your end point, you're not looking at developing towards becoming a professional athlete. (laughs) That's not the case. Though, if you're really looking at that 10 year pathway that we talk about, I mean, 10 years is a minimum baseline. It takes longer. But if you're looking at that 10 years, just for example, or to focus on what's the work or what shows you that this is the pathway right for you? Have you got a hold of that that work? Not just the data and the science, but this, the discussions that back that up and really guide you towards that next step. And then once you've taken that next step, what's the next one and what's the next one? Because it's not just one. It's not just five. They are, or there are little steps integrated throughout to guide you. There are specific movement patterns, movement parameters to habitualize, to become conditioned around. But this takes time and that's okay. Though it's incredibly important to have that team structure there. The player, the coach, the parent, that is simply mindful of these steps, conscious that it is a work in progress and it's not just two years. It's not just about ranking points and this tournament and that. And then, oh, this injury has happened because we negated to look at how your body was growing and how this load could actually have a negative consequence on that. And I mean, from my perspective, it, it's, it's very simplistic because if we're looking at the athlete as a whole between those developmental years, anywhere from 10 through to 18, the body changes. And if you are not accommodating the changes in load, there's going to be an injury. If you are not accommodating different techniques due to how that athlete is built, there is going to be an injury. If you are not accommodating the athlete as an individual and teaching every single child the exact same thing and expecting the exact same outcome, there are going to be injuries. You'll have some wins, but you're going to have the failures as well. And that's not what it's about. It's about embodying what you know and sharing that specifically to the individual 
and making those allowances so the individual can excel. And I think we're going to finish on that because it's such an important uh, topic, profound, in-depth, detailed, a little bit serious, Um, but it's so important. And I'm saying that because I was one of those athletes back then that did get injured. I was one of those athletes that just kept asking the questions about is this what my technique should be or you know is this going to lead to essentially an optimal performance parameter or not and a lot of the coaches especially back then that they really couldn't address that or answer that and that's something that I find has not changed it's still the case and that really underlines a lot of the work um, because I'm with you. If you're out there and you've had an injury, I get you because they suck. And that's, I think, what Beyond Top 10 Tennis is about, is that I coming to you, not just from that scientific standpoint, from that humanized standpoint, because I was that player too. And I know what it's all about. And from a coaching perspective, me too. I know what it's all about and really what it takes. And when we wrap that all up with the science and look how awesome the data is and what it's done for us and how it empowers us to become better coaches, athletes, players, then, you know, I I think that's when we're really moving the marker and that is when and now we're beginning to unleash the next generation of play. really looking at what the data tells us, um, the releases tell us about building an athlete as a whole, we really need to get serious about the pathway that's involved, but also the learning structure of those responsible. And when we're looking at that responsibility and the matrix there, and it is that continual upkeep, Ask yourself, if you are the player, what level of upkeep is my coach at? If you are that parent, working with your child to fit that right coach, finding or navigating through all the coaches out there, trying to pinpoint the one that just just fits. It just feels right and it fits. That has a wonderful rapport. Thank you so much for listening. Um, Today's episode, I know it was very loaded and it had a couple of offshoots there, but they were really important from, you know, the education spectrum and really getting down or clarifying, I guess, what's underwrapped within all that. Um, But also how important it is to maintain that learning cycle. Um, If you'd like to get a copy of The Secrets to Optimal Performance Success, um, you head on over to AM8 International. That's am8international.com. For any comments or questions, please head on over to AM8 International or on over to Topic Thread. That's topicthread.com. It is the only social network that I am on. Um, or if you would like something different, which is not tennis specific, it's it's a bit of fun and it is my first fictional release that came out last year. That's on pinkoctopus.com and all the links are, are in the bio and in the show notes. Um, look, if you enjoyed today's episode, please, please, please subscribe, follow, like, even share if you, if you know someone who would find this to be rather insightful and would really, you know, like to join us on this journey. Um, that would be um, phenomenal. Obviously, the 
more you do, the more we're sharing and I guess coming together with all of those, I guess, comments, ideas and discussions really, uh, I guess, empowers beyond top 10 tennis to move that market even further, which is incredibly rewarding and exciting. Um, On that note, um, I'm so grateful for you joining us. I've had fun. I hope you have too. Um, I am your host, Dr. Ashley Morgan Burge, and this is Beyond Top 10 Tennis, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.